Good. Um, so keep it up. Keep it up. Well, get out your folders. Hopefully you're taking home papers each week and, or, or leaving them in there so you are accumulating some papers. We'd like when you are done to have a nice folder you can refer to and go, that's what I was, that's what I learned in confirmation or what I was supposed to learn. <laughs> and the, well, the, one of the first things we handed out well, way back in January was a schedule. And it said confirmation class parent slash you crunch. Who's got that? Because on one side it listed everything we were going to do together. That's not it. Uh, yeah, uh, turn it around. Wait, can I see? Yeah, that's the one. I can't see. Can you see that one? That's one where it's in the Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I made copies of this at one time. It was missing a page, remember? Well, it's just like the same problem with the, um, the catechism. It was all double spaced. Yeah, did it say, well, yeah, that's the one. It's missing the page with the schedule, though. With most yeah. of it. Okay, do you have one? Uh, was there a separate piece of paper that had the confirmation class schedule? I don't know. Remember how the cat comes in and skipped that page? It did the same thing with that one. That first page was yeah, it's weird. Oh, we sent it out a bunch of times. I know an email. But we, we okay. I guess no one had this. Oh boy. <laughs> well, at least you had it in email. So. Yeah, I think I just have the first page. Okay, like you want me to copy that? Um, well, actually, the one they have is actually the board. This one also? Yeah. Oh, I just. Uh, I think that's what we talked about. Yeah, that's what we talked about. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that would be helpful, except there's probably going to be a bunch of stuff yeah. to copy. <laughs> okay, so. It's kind of fun. Um, why don't this side. Take and every other one, and uh, so you can look on to somebody, and then we'll figure out what we want to make a bunch of copies of. Okay. So if you got that, so way back when, so keep moving around so you got one every two people or so, so you can see the schedule. I want to review over the calendar together and what the topics were and stuff. Okay. Is that just the last one there? Is that the last one on that side? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to make a um, Well, like I said, there would be, okay. there'll probably be others, although, uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll just wait and see what we need. Um, way back when, what was our first class? I believe we discussed, uh, I have the notes right here, we discussed, um, it may have been the first class, maybe it's some of the early, I think the early classes, but I believe it was when we discussed. Um, <laughs> he believe big build up here. Yeah, yeah, we we discussed like we talked about all the different branches of Christianity, and we discussed some of the like traditions of our religion. <clears throat> I believe that was the first day. Might have, might have been might have been some of that in Will's. Will taught the first yeah. class. And we called it Presbyterianism 101. Yes, that's yes, that was, was it. That was it. Yeah, good for you. I think that's great. So, do you have the outline from that? Did we'll give you an outline? You can stand it on something. No. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was talking about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what does this say across the top? Presbyterian, what's that? Presbyterian, what's that? <laughs> okay. Does it say you or not? This one says confirmation journey first step. I thought that's the one I did, but okay. So who's got that? Does everyone have that? Yeah? Do you want to have that in your in your what'd you cover in that? Let's talk about that for a minute. Meredith, what are some of the things you talked about? 
Okay. Yeah. 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 What does make the Presbyterian Church different? Anyone else have taking notes that day? Excuse me, yes. So uh, everybody here is equal and welcome, no matter uh, who you are. Nice. Nice. And that's not just Presbyterian, that's this particular church, because even yeah. some Presbyterian churches might not be as welcoming to all people based on lifestyle and things like that. That orientation. And sexual orientation and things like that. This church is very welcoming to everybody. We try to be. Not perfect, but we try to be. Anything else? What else do you see on that? Um, do you have a vision with that blank check? No. So if somebody have a blank one or one we could make a copy of? Who doesn't have a, that, a copy of that in there? Okay. Good. We'll make a few copies of that. <laughs> okay. So, what else? Anything else about that week? Um, kind, of, kind of a beginning to look at this, yes. You have a table and one set up where you show the altar. Ah, yeah. Communion table. So we try to correct people because sometimes people say, I'll oh, put it up on the altar. It's not really an altar. I mean, I know what they mean and I don't always correct them, but I try to because it's not an altar. Because what happens on an altar in a <laughs> biblical sense, in an Old Testament sense, yes? <laughs> That's on the altar is where all the teachings are made. and Right, although uh, when they used to sacrifice animals, they do that on an altar, right? Yeah. And it's going to be blood on it. You know, and it was a place where they would sacrifice animals. And so the early church and Paul interpreted Jesus dying for us as Jesus being that sacrifice. We no longer need to sacrifice an animal on the altar because Christ became the sacrificial lamb for us. And so the, the church began to, uh, to run with that theology and then had this big altar and then talked about the body and blood being the very body and very blood of Jesus. And we've, we kind of, along came our branch of the church, John Calvin and our people that we follow in the Presbyterian Church. It's not, it's not get so bloody about it. It's a symbolic representation of a spiritual truth that Jesus did die for us. But we're not reenacting his sacrifice. We are his community. So just like your family gathers around the family table, instead of an altar where we sacrifice Jesus again, <laughs> let's gather around a table where we share a meal together. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I like that. There's nothing wrong with the other theology. If you want to call it an altar, and that's how you want to think about it, fine. But I like the way we do it, and, and that's what we're doing. So yeah. so yeah, that first week it got some beginning thoughts around um, uh, Presbyterianism 101, or say what? What does it mean to be Presbyterian? And that's what you're being confirmed in. Both the, the whole Christian church, but specifically Presbyterian branch and specifically this church. The father of the baby you baptized today was confirmed in this church probably 20 years ago. It's probably in his mid 30s now, early 30s. He had a baby, or just that big, a little two year old that's going to be baptized today. They live on the West Coast and they haven't found a home church out there yet, but they just moved to San Francisco. So they're coming here to, coming home to have their baby baptized. And he was confirmed standing up where you guys are standing. Uh, going to stand on uh, about 20 years ago. So not that cool? All right, so the next one, we, what was the next class? Somebody say what was next on that outline. Um, what is a yeah. president? Yeah, we called it history and creeds. Some of you were here, I outlined the history of the Presbyterian Church with these cards, remember? Give a little symbolic reminder of... Yeah. Yes, you put it up on the TV. And I taped it up on the TV. <coughs> That's low tech and old, <coughs> old high tech. I taped a bunch of cards for an old TV. <laughs> so, yeah, we covered the history of starting with Jesus and all the way through history to uh, to now. And they give you an outline because we have this visual reminder. Um, and if you missed that, I should make a. I don't have a visual. We'll work on some way I can get that to you. Does anyone remember anything about history that we've sort of been talking about a little bit just now? Anything else about history that you remember? 
Yes. Oh, that wasn't your hand? <laughs> remember Constantine? Did we talk about Constantine? Briefly. Yes. I remember Constantine from, to take Western history, Western civilization. I remember. He was a Roman emperor, right? And he became a Christian. And so suddenly in like 314 or something like that, AD, Christians went from being scared all the time because it was illegal to be a Christian to suddenly the emperor became a Christian. And suddenly it was cool to be a Christian. Everyone was. Uh, and then Christianity became the dominant religion of Western Europe for the next thousand years. And uh, then we got to our our reformers, uh, John Calvin and stuff. And then they came to this country, brought with them uh, uh, a Presbyterian heritage. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Then the next week, what was the next week? I taught three in a row there. <laughs> What's the next week? Can you see the outline? Jane, what's the next one? Um. The Bible has a story. Bible has story, right. And that one, I'll give you a little outline that has the, um, I've got some more of this. If you weren't here that week, you pass these up if you weren't here for Bible as story. That was a week where we had a, um, a, little, a little symbolic map that showed uh, the biblical story as an overview. We wanted you to come away with a sense that the Bible is not a book to be, it's not a science textbook, right? No, it's belief. It's about beliefs. It's about God. It's about uh, spiritual truth rather than scientific truth. And so sometimes people get confused that way and they try to prove science or prove creation and disprove evolution and stuff like that for the Bible. It's a, it's a, Bible. It's a story. It tells us the story of God's uh, dealing with God's people. So do you have that little map? Remember that little map we had there? It gave a sense of that story from the beginning all the way through the end. We haven't reached the end yet, have we? Okay, so we talked about some of the dangers about how we use the Bible. Sometimes we like I said, are too literal about it. We, we talk about it, and we use it as a sledgehammer. People, people say, hey, if you don't believe this, you're a bad person. You're going to hell if you don't believe this exactly the way I do. That's not how we should use the Bible. And that's why we, in Sunday school, we really emphasize stories. We want you to learn the stories of the Bible. That's what it is. It's all one big story. Your life is a story. And you're learning God's, uh, living out God's, plan for your life. Okay, any questions about that week? Anything, you've got your outline, any, any, somebody comment on something about that you saw or learned? How many Gospels are there? Oh, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, 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 Mine. And got another one? John. Yeah. Paul. No, Paul wrote a lot of letters, but he didn't write. The gospel refers to, there are four gospels, each of them telling the story of Jesus. The book of Revelations. That's in there too, but it's not one of the four gospels. I'm going to say it. Luke? Yeah, you got it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's right. And you're reading one of them, the shortest one. <laughs> what are you guys reading? Mark. Mark. Yeah. Okay. Tell us the story of Jesus. You'll hear it sometimes when you grow up later in, you know, and pay attention to things, you know, people say, well, there's a whole bunch of other Gospels. There's the Gospel of Thomas, there's the Gospel of Judas, and why didn't they make it in the Bible? And, you know, there's some wisdom in those books, but the church early on decided that these four were the most trustworthy and the most authentic first-hand witnesses of uh, Jesus, re reflections of Jesus. Uh, teachings and, and, and sayings in his ministry. Okay. Then the next week, what was the next week? Uh, Emma, you can say it. Oh. You can grab it. Worship and community. Worship and community. Why not sleep in? Why bother coming to worship? I remember that one. Yeah. 
That was a good lecture. Well, I don't say I, so myself. Actually, I wasn't there, but I came back the day, uh, the week after, oh. and was told of it. Okay. Good. And let me. I've got a handout. That if you didn't get that handout, you can get this. Um, what did we talk about there? Why not sleep in? What did we talk about there? Oh, um, like yes. Commitment to the parish. Yeah. Why it's important to be together. Like if you never get together with your friends, will you kind of all? Will you always be friends? No. Kind of. It's hard to keep a friendship going if you never get together and do anything together. Yeah. So the church, if you don't come to church and be a part of things, um, you're going to miss out. In fact, that's. I was trying to tell a joke earlier. Way down the middle of the page there, under B. See those B, the second point there. CH dot dot CH, what's missing? You are. You are. Uh, it's a little joke to say, hey, you do need to. You need to be a part of things. It's not only what you bring and what you can give and, and we need you here, but also you'll get something out of it. What do you get out of coming to church regularly? What, what? Um, you get kind of, I guess, in a sense, wisdom from a lot of places of like you hear the sermon but then you also are around other people who took from the sermon different truths and so it's a calm place where you can come and collect your thoughts and others can collect theirs and you can share and trade and that's, that's a nice example I was almost I had a paragraph about that in my sermon I cut out that we get, we learn from example. Like this little baptiz, baptized baby, you know, when we baptize baby, we promise to raise them in the faith. And that partly that's teaching them Sunday school classes, but partly that's just how we live. And we model a Christian lifestyle together. And we learn from that. We learn from one another that way. Yeah. And we talked about it, why we worship the way we do in this place. Hey, there she is. Yeah. Are you ready for something? Talk about why, can, somebody, can you grab your own chair there, Dylan? Yeah. Hold on. But why we worship the way we do. You, know, you go to a different church, you might be gone to a friend's church, and you might have a band, and singers with microphones up front, guitars, drums. You might have the <coughs> pastor come out in blue jeans and a t-shirt, and with a headset, and come walking around the church and talking to people, and stuff like that. And yet we're we're different. We pipe organ, we got choir, we got a pastor wears a robe, we kind of we're quiet, we don't shout too much at church. <laughs> and there's is one better than the other? No, they're just right. different. No, they're just different. Uh, but we got our the way we model our worship from a chapter in Isaiah. That's on the back part of your outline there. We looked at that chapter together. Yeah. We talked about the seraphs. Yeah, the seraphs, yeah, the seraphs, those angelic creatures that fly around with six wings and yeah it's a beautiful image uh, of Isaiah just being so uh, aw awestruck uh, in, in front of God and, um, so we we kind of take that approach to worship of being reverent and um, that church is a special place to come and be reverent before God it doesn't mean you can't have fun and hoot and holler and <laughs> do all that kind of stuff. But that's just not how we choose to worship. <coughs> I think we have fun together though. The kids yeah. sing, we clap, we you know, we celebrate things together, we laugh at jokes, we you know, so we can we can have a good time together, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's a little boring sometimes, but hey. Sometimes being bored is good. You can slow down a little bit. <laughs> Be alone with your thoughts, like you said, your thought. Okay, good. Then Pastor uh, uh, Barton came and talked to you. Remember Charles Barton came and his first time he came, he talked about the sacraments. She did. We have two sacraments. Do you remember what they are? Uh, yes, and? Lord's Supper. No. <laughs> yes, Meredith had it. Lord's, Lord's Supper. Supper. Lord's I think Supper. marriage was one of the other ones for, uh, for, the, for the Catholic Church. The Catholic yes. Church has... A bunch more sacraments, yes. Everyone say this together. Communion. Communion. 
Baptism. Baptism. One more time. Baptism. Baptism. Communion. Communion. One more time. Communion. Communion. Baptism. Baptism. That's one thing you should definitely know. Yes, Especially, sir. that's something even like the session might ask. Yeah, yeah that, like could, that could be a question. Baptism, yeah. communion, two sacraments. Yeah. And Charles, I don't know if he gave you an outline this year, but last year he gave you handed out an outline. So I kept a copy of it and I put it up for you. There's one for everybody there if you want to have a copy of of that as we talked about that. Um, one thing you remember that he said about communion or baptism. Do you remember something he said? I wasn't here for the lecture because obviously he was doing teaching. So what specifically did he say? One thing you remember again. Something on the outline you want to highlight. Anything? Okay. Let's think of something to say about communion. Well, we talked about communion already. It's the communion table rather than the altar. And we talked about baptism quite a bit already today. So those are the two sacraments uh, that we believe in infant baptism. Some of you have not yet been baptized. How many, I know, I think Elizabeth, you haven't been baptized yet, have you? I don't know. You don't know? No. I think your mom told us you had not been baptized. Anyone else, do you know whether you've not been baptized? Most of you were baptized as infants. I was baptized on my 16th birthday. Wow. So some of you are like raising families where the parents wanted, like mine, wanted you to learn for yourself and decide for yourself whether you were going to be baptized or not. Okay? And then we will baptize you on Confirmation Sunday. That'd be cool. So we, but we do believe in infant baptism. It's okay to baptize infants. It's okay to wait until later if you want. If you become a Christian, you join our church, and you never were baptized, we'll baptize you. So anyway, the last church I served was right on Lake Erie, one of the great lakes in Erie, Pennsylvania. And uh, some people wanted to be baptized in the lake. So we went down in that big lake. And the great lakes are almost like the ocean. You know, those waves coming in and crashing around us. Put them in the water. There's something cool about that uh, compared to the little bit of water we use in church. But so our Presbyterian motto is the old Burger King slogan: "Any way you like it, you know, we we'll, you can have it your way. We can we'll baptize you the way you want to be baptized." Okay. Then the next week, uh, Will was teaching again, and he talked about the Reformation. That was a big lecture, a big uh, topic. What's the Reformation? Mm -hmm. Yes. Andrew. The Reformation was, I believe, that was Martin Luther, right? Mm -hmm. He wants that movie clip. Yeah. And he was like, I <laughs> yeah, and he talked, and it showed us like how, like it seemed almost in that Roman culture, like belief had become a commodity. And it was uh, being sold to the people, oh, yeah. and then and enlightenment was almost like, like a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. It basically was, and then he wanted to change it. So Martin Luther, that was when we stopped watching the movie. But Martin <laughs> Luther went on, and he like he like found his own and founded the church. Uh, the, the new church. The new church, right? Yeah, he didn't mean it to be that way, but that's what it turned out to be because he got kicked out of the old church. <laughs> and then along came John Calvin a little later. and uh, um, So I'm going to run because I need to go and get ready for church. We've got a baptism and a lot of stuff going on today. But what I'm going to pass out now, and then we can just take a minute or two more and then wrap it up. Or I guess it's time to wrap up anyway. Are we supposed to... Let me just say one more thing about okay. what's coming out now is the outline. Last Sunday, Pastor Charles Barton talked about stewardship and service. And I know he didn't hand anything out. But then, yes, about giving. Guys, you maybe think you don't have any money to give. Well, you don't, but you, you can give out of what you have. You can give your time. You can give your, yeah, give your, your skill. Yeah, your skill. What did you have on the And you know we've got um, well, um, we've got we're coming up on high school next year. Some of you can come on a mission trip and serve in the summer. Yeah.
serve other people. Okay. Well, don't, you're not done yet. Will's got a couple announcements, and then we'll we'll see you next week. We'll start talking about our statements of faith next week. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. So. Okay. All right. Next week, everybody. Next week. So, um, if you remember way back at the beginning, one of the things um, you need to do during this class is write your own statement of faith. So um, we went over like the Nicene Creed, remember that was like, we believe in God the Father Almighty, all that kind of stuff. You're writing your own statement of faith. So next week, uh, Dale is going to kind of go over what that entails, what you need to do for that. So that's an important class to be at, because that's an assignment you need to do. Yes? I'll be in this video. Okay, so you need to watch the video then, because you're going to need to write that. That's what you submit to the session and all that kind of stuff. Elizabeth, huh? pay attention. Sorry. Okay. Um, also, next week, then, you're reading chapter 11 of Mark, and I think then we're up to chapter, to question 60 in the Catechism. Mm -hmm. um, it, a bunch of you, I have your money for the retreat. If you brought it in, thanks. If you didn't, I need that next week, okay? I'm going to send an email to your parents, but you help remind them, too, because sometimes they don't read the emails and they forget them. So I need the money for the retreat. It's $75. We paid the $25 deposit, but then you're responsible for the balance. Um, I think that's it. Any questions about anything on the review? Yeah, Dylan. Probably wasn't a question. I just have a, like, a, I just have an announcement. I'm going to shamelessly plug that it's my birthday today. Oh, yay! Happy birthday! birthday. Thank you. Thank you. We'll say happy birthday to everybody. Happy birthday, birthday okay? to your mom. Happy birthday. This is not about today, but like, can our mentor help us make our food? Yeah, yeah. No, that's definitely something you talk over with your mentor, 100%. <laughs> Um, you can talk with your mentor, you can talk with me, you can talk with Dale, anyone else, like your Sunday school teachers, anything like that, okay? Any other questions? Alright, we're going to break it up. I'm going to take Shane and Kelly, because you guys are reading today, so we're going to go over